Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, kinematics of machines tutorials. And in this video lecture, that I am going to explain about condition for kinematic chain and as well as Grobler's criteria. Okay. So first, we try to look at the condition for kinematic chain. So what is the condition we can consider? Means here uh, we can consider two conditions. Uh, to confirm whether the given chain is kinematic chain or not. Okay, these two conditions in the form of two formulas Basic formulas which can be used for confirming whether the given chain is kinematic chain or not So what are those two formulas we can consider? So let us look the two formulas uh, That is n is equal to 2p minus 4 and uh, uh, And also one more formula j is equal to 3 by 2 into n minus 2 these are the basic two formulas we can use uh, to confirm whether it is a kinematic chain or not. So when there is an equality condition between these two values that is on left hand side and right hand side based upon that we can consider kinematic chain whether it is a kinematic chain or not. So in these two formulas again uh, if you want to know what is n p j means n is number of links as usual and p means number of pairs and j is number of joints and again here n means number of links. So by knowing number of links, number of pairs and number of joints, we can confirm or we can check, we can verify whether the given chain is a kinematic chain or not. So kinematic chain means uh, already we have discussed uh, whenever there is a constrained relative motion between each and every part of a uh, chain, then only that chain can be considered as a kinematic chain. So to, to confirm that only, these are the two basic formulas we can use. So uh, other than uh, equality condition, if we get uh, uh, less than or uh, greater than, so what we can consider? What is the name we can give to the uh, chain or uh, what type of the uh, what, what type of the condition we will get from the chain? Okay, that we see now. So in the form of table column, I am going to show you. So first condition is I am considering if the left hand side value is greater than the right hand side. From these two formulas, if we are getting left hand side is greater than right hand side. Okay, whatever the formula we use, same values we get uh, for a given particular chain. So in that uh, in that condition, uh, for a given chain, if the left hand side value is greater than right hand side. So what is the name we can give to the chain means here? It is a locked chain. Okay, so when the LHS is greater than RHS, that chain is called as locked chain and this type of uh, chain is used for rigid frames or structures like bridges okay for rigid frames and structures we can use the chain as it is a locked chain that means there will be no relative motion between each and every part of the chain when this condition is satisfied okay and now we consider the next condition if uh, we get uh, left hand side value is equal to right hand side value so in this condition it is satisfying the condition okay so when uh, this condition is satisfied, then the chain is called as your constrained kinematic chain. Okay, when there is an equality condition in between LHS and RHS value, then the chain given uh, can be considered as a constrained kinematic chain. That means uh, each and every link of a chain is going to have a particular directional motion means a constrained motion between them. Okay, next we go for LHS is less than RHS. So when the left hand side value is less than uh, right hand side value in this condition what we can call the chain means here the chain is unconstrained chain that means there will be no uh, particular directional motion to each and every link of a mechanism it means no relative motion between the uh, to, uh, between the two links uh, that means in a pair of elements so irrespective of the uh, no, sorry when we change the direction of the force uh, uh, the link uh, also moves in a particular different uh, direction other than in a definite uh, direction okay so when this condition is satisfied we can call the chain as a unconstrained as an unconstrained chain okay try to remember these three condition uh, conditions uh, based upon that we can decide whether it is a locked chain constrained kinematic chain or unconstrained chain I hope you understood and next uh, next slide I'm going to give some examples for each and every uh, condition that is LHS is greater than RHS LHS is equal to RHS and LHS is less than RHS 
okay so first a condition uh, we know that lhs is greater than rhs when this condition is obtained when uh, we can face this kind of the condition means here uh, a simple example we can consider that is as uh, three links are connected in a shape of rectangle and when we take this kind of the chain uh, it is not kinematic chain uh, that we need to prove but actually the condition is lhs is greater than rhs automatically it is not kinematic chain but whether it is a locked chain or not we check it by using the any one of the two formulas okay so three links uh, first we try to write number of links uh, that is n is equal to three links and the number of joints is equal to also three joints and the number of pairs is also three okay so now we use the formula n is equal to 2p minus 4 in this uh, in place of n we can write 3 is equal to uh, 2 into 3 minus 4 and 3 is equal to 2 into 3 6 minus 4 then it will give you 3 is equal to 2 so it is not equality condition 3 is not equal to 2 so which leads to 3 is uh, greater than 2 so it means that the left hand side value is greater than right hand side so when we face this kind of uh, uh, condition so the chain can be called as here locked chain so when you use this formula also the same condition will be obtained that is uh, left hand side is greater than right hand side so ultimately this chain is called as locked chain so this uh, triangular form of arrangement of the links uh, will give you locked chain condition okay similarly we go for the next condition that is lhs is equal to rhs so for this i would like to take a four bar chain okay this is the four bar chain four links are connected together uh, in this uh, if you write number of links uh, that is n is equal to four then if you write the number of joints that number of joints is equal to four and similarly number of uh, pairs is equal to also four again we try to use the formula n is equal to 2p minus 4 so n is 4 and that is equal to we can write it as 2 into 4 minus 4 we can write and uh, then uh, 4 is equal to we can write it as uh, 2 into 4 it becomes 8 so 8 minus 4 8 minus 4 will get so 8 minus 4 means we can write it as 4 uh, minus sorry 4 is equal to 4 so both the uh, values are equal that is the left hand side value is equal to uh, right hand side so it becomes a kinematic chain so when this condition is satisfied we can consider the chain as a constrained kinematic chain got it next we go for lhs is less than rhs condition so for this we try to uh, take one more example that is uh, five links are connected together in this particular format and in this uh, number of links becomes equal to five and uh, number of uh, joints uh, is equal to four sorry five only number of joints if you count one two three four five so number of joints is also is equal to is also five and number of pairs also becomes equal to five okay next uh, we try to consider the same formula n is equal to 2p minus 4 and then n is equal to means it will give you 5 is equal to uh, that is 2 into 5 2 into 5 5 is equal to 2 into 5 minus 2 into 5 minus and it will give you 4 2 into 5 minus 4 and then uh, finally we can write the uh, values in the next step as 5 is equal to 2 into 5 it becomes a 10 2 into 5 becomes 10 oh god sorry guys it is responding slowly come on come on 2 into 5 it is 10 make it 10 10 minus 4 10 minus 4 so we wait for that uh, until we get the 4 then 10 minus 4 all we know that it is of 6 then finally 
what we can consider so 5 is less than 6 so that is left hand side is uh, uh, less than right hand side left hand side is less than right hand side so when this condition is obtained uh, we can call that uh, the given chain is unconstrained chain the given chain is unconstrained chain so this is the uh, five links format when it is given in a pentagonal shape or something polygon shape so in this condition when the links are connected then we want to get the uh, particular kinematic chain okay sorry it's uh, giving a wrong value uh, actually it should be five five less than six not four the four less than six five less than six so try to make a correction here so finally this uh, link can be this uh, chain can be called as a as an unconstrained chain okay we go to the next slide now so next slide is about doubler's criteria so this is the uh, criteria which is uh, uh, given by the grubblers so when we can consider this grubblers criteria means here this criteria is uh, basically obtained from kuzbia criteria and when this uh, grubblers criteria is considered means when the higher pairs is zero when there are no higher pairs in a particular mechanism okay that mechanism can be considered under grubblers criteria so that means uh, basically the kuzbia criteria is used for finding the degrees of freedom and that can be applied to uh, normal uh, uh, lower pairs uh, which is a combination of higher pairs also but here the grubler criteria we need to apply only to the plane mechanism which are having only lower pairs okay so which is also used for finding the degrees of freedom and in this criteria especially the degrees of freedom is uh, assumed to be equal to one why because when we use all lower pairs uh, we get uh, the degrees of freedom as a one so this is applied to plane mechanisms and the degrees of freedom becomes equal to 1 only so the degrees of freedom formula we know that 3 into n minus 1 minus 2j minus h so based on grubler's criteria we need to assume the h value should be as a 0 then uh, degrees of freedom uh, becomes equal to 3n minus 1 minus 2j and at the same time in this criteria we get the degrees of freedom for a plane mechanism as 1 so when this degrees of freedom becomes equal to 1 then the equation can be modified like th like this 1 is equal to 3 into n minus 1 minus 2j and that is equal to when you take 3 inside 3n minus 3 minus 2j okay then uh, if you take 1 on right side then 0 is equal to 3n minus 3 minus 2j minus 1 3n minus 3 minus 2j minus 1 come on buddy come on okay so when uh, the 2 minus 3 minus 1 we add it then it becomes minus 4 finally we can uh, write the equation as 3n minus 2j minus 4 is equal to 0 3n minus 2j minus 4 is equal to 0 so this is the modified form of the grubler's criteria equation so when a particular planar mechanism is given and uh, if uh, or uh, if it is uh, if it is given as planar mechanism and uh, and it uh, comes under grubler's criteria if it is mentioned as it is uh, it comes under grubler's criteria and the number of joints are given and the number of links are not given means we can find out the number of links with the help of this formula so this grubler's criteria is only concerned for plane mechanisms and that two uh, they should have degrees of freedom as one okay that is the importance of grubler's criteria so i hope you understood and uh, sorry about that uh, my system slow running slow running this powerpoint is taking some time to respond to my input and sorry for that and uh, regarding my explanation if you still have any doubts please feel free to give a comment to my video and once again uh, 
thanks for watching my video and don't sub don't forget to subscribe to my channel uh thanks for watching my video thank you all